Hi, welcome to another session of fly tying step by step. Today we are going to tie a baitfish pattern, especially for largemouth yellows, but it will work on any large predatory fish. I'm using the SL45 bonefish Kamagatsu hook in a size 4. You can also use the B10S in a size 6 or 4. It's got, it's got a nice thick wire to it, sharp point and uh, also a nice gape to it. So to start we are going to lay a thread base in olive on the hook and advance your thread all the way to the bend of the hook. Then I prefer the zonker with a barred look to it. Your fur you measure around right about the length of the shank maybe a little bit shorter, depends on the fiber lengths. This is in a dark olive. Just moisten, just moisten the hairs if it's in your way. And then take two or three tight wraps over the zonka and then a few wraps in front of the zonka. Advance your thread to about five millimeters behind the eye of the hook. Here we are going to tie in our dumbbell eyes. In this instance I'm using lead dumbbells. You can also use tungsten. Depend on the depending on the flow rate. Sometimes it's necessary to use tungsten just to get that fly down and in the strike zone. This will work for tigers as well, but the materials just won't last long enough. Especially the zonka. So figure eight wraps and then just tie them down. You can use a bit of super glue if you feel necessary, but if you do a proper figure eight, it should be fine. Okay, taking my thread back to the zonka, and here I'm going to create a dubbing loop for my body material. Bring my thread back and I am just going to do a half inch so that my thread can be secure and out of the way. Now for the body I'm using a synthetic in a light olive. In the, on the camera it shows more like a neutral color but it's actually a light olive and just to help me with this dubbing loop I'm going to use a bit of bee wax and just put that onto the thread it just helps to keep the materials in place so with that done I'm going to add my materials Just remember, don't make them too bushy when you spin your dubbing brush or dubbing loop, you will find that they bundle up quite easily. So sparsely add your materials. In this instance, I'm putting the thread in the middle of the material. Take your time, get your spacing right. If you do this right, you don't have to brush out clumps and lumps of material that's not sitting properly. Seeing that I put wax on it, if I just push down 
concentrate the materials will stay in the position i'm going to add a little bit more with this dabbing loop you're creating the illusion of bulk but actually this fly is quite sparse okay so with that in place i'm going to hold my thread 90 degrees to the hook shank pinch it between my thumb and point finger and then just spin my dabbing loop twister and as soon as you release your finger and thumb you will see it spins up now I will just check if these fibers that got trapped in the process just lightly brush them because the dabbing loop is not 100% secure yet but I'm just releasing them now so that when I spin it further they don't get trapped even more this is why I sometimes prefer to make a brush beforehand so now that I've got a tighter spin on the thread I will use my velcro just to brush out the few trapped fibers and get a nice sparse brush on it as I said, sometimes I prefer to rather do a brush with wire, prepare them beforehand and then just tie them in. It does create a little bit more bulk with the wire, but on a bait fish where you want to create a bit of weight, the wire is not really a problem. Okay, I think that should do it. Just going to spin it up a bit, make sure that all those fibers are nicely trapped just give it another good brush and I'm going to use my thumb and point finger and just comb those fibers to the bend of the hook I'm going to use the rotary function on my vise just to tie in the brush Just keep on brushing them back. So I'm just making touching wraps with the thread and just combing back those fibers as I progress to the front of the fly. going to put a few wraps just behind the dumbbell eyes so it's nice and buggy there and now I will bring my thread back and just secure my dubbing loop behind the dumbbell eyes the reason for this is I am going to do a figure eight with the brush but I just want to come out the fibers a bit and see if I've got enough behind the dumbbell. You can also use your dabbing needle. But seeing that we prepared the dabbing loop properly, there are very, very few trapped fibers. Now I'm just going to make a figure eight with my dubbing loop over and behind and over and behind and then just one wrap or so in front just make sure you comb back those materials Try 
consume away the excess of the dubbing loop. Just make a few reps to make sure all my materials are secured properly. Okay, now I'm going to part the fibers on top of the fly to both sides of the hook shank. If you find a few trap fibers, you can just pull them out. And with that done, I'm going to pull my zonker over with the materials to the eye of the hook. Secure it. Just combing those fibers back so that they don't interfere in the eye work. We are going to trim it a bit when we are done. There's a few fibers trapped beneath the dumbbell with that figure eight wrap that we did. And we'll just Comb them out. Now, the next step is to put in a um, weed guard. It's a personal preference, depends on what kind of fish you are targeting. If you're targeting bass and uh, largemouth yellows, I strongly recommend that you use a weed guard, seeing that you're going to fish for fish in structure. So for that I'm going to use a piece of monofilament. Um, I'm using 35 pounds and I'm just going to flatten the one end first so that I can tie it in just behind the eye of the hook. After you've flattened it, you can't really see the mono, there we go. I'm just going to bend it so that my weed guard creates a little kink there. I'm going to try and get it more to a 90 degree. But you can also always manipulate it a little bit after you've tied it in. Again, you can use a bit of super glue just to help you secure it in the tying process. But if you flatten your monofilament like we did, you will find that it usually doesn't create a, a problem for you. When you do a weed guard, just make sure that it's in line with the point of the hook. When you're happy, you can secure it and you can do your whip finish. Sometimes I'll put in a orange hotspot using orange fire orange thread for my head of the fly. You can also use red or black. It's really up to you. Okay, so now for the Trimming part. 
Sometimes I won't trim it, I'll just leave it as it is. And when it's wet, you get a totally different look as to what you see now. But as in my photos that I posted on Facebook, I trimmed these a bit. So what I'm doing is I am just separating my zonka and my materials to other side. I'll show you now. Looks more like a punk or a devilfish. And then I'm just going to come in at an angle from the front to the back, leaving my materials longer at the dumbbell and shorter at the bend of the hook. So I'm actually cutting in a V and the same below the fly, leaving it longer below the dumbbell and shorter at the bend of the hook. You can always come in if it's still too long and trim a little bit more. So I'm going to do the same here on this side. Just make sure that you don't trim your zonka as well. Again, just measuring my material so that it's the same length on both sides. Just taking out all these rancid fibers protruding in front. Opening up the eyes. And just checking my proportions. Okay, there we have the basic shape. Now for my weed cord, just to finish it off, I basically measure it so that it will pass the point of the hook up until the bob. And again, I just come in with my pliers and just bend this mono so it creates a 45 to 90 degree bend in it and then I'll trim it off as I say so it extends right about to the bob of the hook Some people prefer to flatten this part as well. As I said, personal preferences, everybody has their own reasoning behind it. Just pushing it so that it bends properly. And there you have your bait fish in a barred olive zonker and a light olive synthetic 
brush made with a dubbing loop. Thank you for watching Flight Tank Step by Step. Hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to share it, click on like and subscribe to our YouTube channel and also our Facebook page. Thank you for watching. Enjoy fly fishing and your fly time. Bye.